Yeah, that's interesting. So yeah, it's, it's going to be a communal like, heavy again. Yeah, it's going to be like going yeah. back to D1, isn't it? Yeah, it's like the whole game is adjusting back to D1. Oh, oh PvP, definitely. Two for one. I really did not like the um the lock behind uh Double down. Alright, that clip's going in the video. Welcome everyone to another Embrace Destiny video. Thank you so much for stopping by. Kaz PhD here. Today we are continuing our PvP challenge where we take your loadout into the Crucible and prove that not only can anything be viable, even with today's meta, but that it can be fun. Uh, last time was the dreaded double sidearm challenge. You can find a link somewhere around here. We used Traveler's Chosen and Drang. I had to learn a lot about movement, cover, and close quarters engagements. So. This time we're focusing on a completely different uh, weapon, Redrix's Broadsword. So Rat Pack, thank you very much for the suggestion. He suggested I use this pulse rifle and any old sidearm and see what we can do. Apparently he runs this in both PvE and PvE, almost never takes it off. So I don't know about you, but I actually kind of slept on this weapon. I was really excited when they made the move where the quest could be more accessible even outside of competitive. But the quest was so long, such a grind, by the time I got it, the Crucible had changed, so I'm excited to jump back in. Redrix's broadsword is a high impact frame, which means low rate of fire, high damage, and it's more accurate when standing still. Now, I didn't know this, but it can actually come with random rolls. I have the quest version, so it comes with chambered compensator, high caliber rolls, and of course, outlaw and desperado. And because it is the quest weapon, it came fully masterworked with stability, and I threw a counterbalance stock mod on there as per Rat Pack's request. So the whole bread and butter with this weapon, the whole way to make this work to its optimal efficiency is to balance Outlaw and Desperado. Essentially, you are trying to get that precision kill, reload, and when that happens, you proc Desperado for about eight seconds, your weapon's rate of fire is really fast. And I'm talking the difference between a slow firing pulse rifle to something like Vigilance Wing speed. It is pretty crazy. You can see it here. I mean, I'm getting the kill from about, you know, medium medium range, a reload, run around the corner and just melt this person. Thank you, stability. Thank you, counterbalance stock. Melts him like a laser. It's really effective. Um, it can be tough, though, because getting a Getting a pulse rifle kill is not difficult, but in today's meta, there's a lot of shotgun rushers, air and till users, snipers, uh, shoulder charges. So you really have to mind your space and try to, you know, try to maintain that medium to long distance. It's also tough because a lot of times you start off getting either the first kill or the desperado kill, and you get team shot like this. So it can be really tough. I spent a lot of time balancing it. When trying to use this weapon, I thought to myself, what could I pair with it in order to uh, to maximize it? I looked at my armor to see what perks and mods I had. On my Titan here, the best I could find was I found a chest piece. We'll see if the video catches up here. I got a chest piece which has uh, unflinching pulse rifle aim. Here we go. So not bad. You know, obviously very useful, especially when you're dueling or maybe if you're getting team shot while you're using it. My boots have traction and pulse rifle scavenger. Not the best, but not the worst either. And my gauntlets here have a uh, light arms loader, which helps me reload my sidearm. The sidearm I'm running, by the way, is the uh, dead man walking from the forge. It's a fast firing, full auto, and I managed to get quick draw and kill clip. So that was pretty fun. When I was looking at exotics, I was in a bit of a bind because I usually run with the heart of inmost light. I love that exotic. It helps me get all of my abilities back just by using another ability. So drop that barricade, get your grenade back faster. It's pretty nice. But with the chest piece I'm wearing, obviously I couldn't do that. So looking at helmets, uh, I thought at first of using the Mask of the Quiet One. Its main uh, exotic perk works similarly to Heart of Inmost Light. Essentially, you get damage, then you get energy. I figured I was going to probably trade off with a lot of damage of using a pulse rifle, um, and it has pulse rifle targeting. Yeah, that, that could be pretty good. I ran with it for a while, and it was pretty interesting, um, but it be I think it was a problem of the effect was too passive. I barely noticed the, uh, the energy increase and the pulse rifle targeting. It's not like you can really put a finger on that, on exactly how accurate you're being. So it's not a bad alternative, but in the end it was suggested, and I did go back to the Scourge of the Crucible, the One-Eyed Mask. 
namely the vengeance perk obviously you get the kill and then you are able to um or as as you are damaged you can track the person and getting a kill with it gives you more damage and that's really about min maxing this weapon the uh, Redrix's broadsword is not a very high damaging weapon, but if you get outlawed a proc and vengeance, you just meld people immediately. It's pretty crazy. I had a few uh, encounters where I was almost able to melt supers with this thing, given that they weren't looking at me and they were pretty far away. I'm gonna check this one out. I get the kill, I get outlawed a proc, I proc Desperado, I swing around the corner, I know there's people here, I see them on the radar, but I can barely see them. I actually use the vengeance tracking to find the enemy. Reload again, come around the corner, both Vengeance and Desperado just melts that person. So yeah, One-Eyed Mask I think is pretty good. It helps track the enemy, allows you to kind of see where they are and time your shots so you can get that precision kill. And it obviously allows you to increase the damage of, uh, of the weapon, anything that you're doing, which is really useful because I found that the Redrix by itself felt a little weak. And I think it's just the fact that Pulse Rifles um, you know, you, it's pretty much all or nothing with pulse rifles. That's what I feel. You can also do things like this where you pair it with a with an ability um, and you can weaken them. But again, it's all about timing. Swinging around the corner, trying to get that kill. Lots and lots of times I found myself um, getting, getting Desperado to proc, uh, but not being able to make use of it. So this was a skill I actually had to kind of pick up Normally when I get outlaw proc, I immediately reload my weapon because I want a full magazine. But if you do that, then Desperado starts from the moment you reload. Sometimes you get an outlaw kill and there's nobody else around. You have to go find them. And usually if you're kind of unexperienced like I was when I started with this weapon, you reload quickly and then just run around trying to find people. You can run into dangerous situations uh, if you don't mean to. So a skill I had to learn was Get the, get the outlaw kill, wait a second or two, then reload, because you get about a four second window. Then you reload, then Desperado procs from there. So rather than eight seconds after the, out, after the outlaw kill, you now essentially can carry Desperado for about 12 seconds, which allows you to really situate yourself. So this gun is all about, uh, it's all about looking ahead. I, I kept saying it was like a scalpel that you have to learn how to juggle to use. You have to know where the enemy is and you have to be ready for the next fight. Obviously it can save your life if you're facing off a couple of people, but usually what's gonna happen is you get that outlaw kill and you immediately need to turn down a lane and find somebody else. Anyway, great weapon, had a lot of fun with it. First day I was pretty terrible, not even any footage here from my first day. Second day really came into my own, and by the third day, I was always top of the leaderboard. So, Rad Pack, thank you very much for the suggestion. If you'd like to make a suggestion, I'm going to put details in the description below. Essentially, you can go to my Twitch channel at any time, even when I'm not streaming. You type in a special command, and your loadout will get saved. And then I kind of go through and find out which one is the most interesting. Hope you enjoy. Thank you all very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye now.